Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial for ethical hacking and penetration testing with Cal Linux. So before I proceed today, what I would be teaching is uh, footprinting and reconnaissance. So before I go ahead deep into what it exactly is, before I go ahead uh, more into letting you know how we can go ahead and use Cal Linux for penetration testing or hacking into some random stuff, I'll teach you how we need to first go ahead with that. So there are a few layers of hacking that need you need to know before you can go ahead and hack into any kind of stuff. Let's say it may be a PC or laptop or cell phone PDA or in any company server or anything. So there are a layer of things that you need to know. You need to follow these specific protocols before you can get into deep hacking. So today I would be teaching you and as you can see uh, over here that we have lots of stuff over here. When you check Cal Linux, we have n number of security tools. So you might be wondering what is information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web application password attacks and many more. So I would first go ahead and teach you the different layers of ethical hacking today. So let's uh, open the web browser and go ahead and check. I'll I have some or the other real let's check uh years of ethical hacking the few things that you need to know before you can proceed uh, into detailed stuff so i would be teaching you that today the first thing that we would be needing would be uh to know that okay the first thing is that uh we need to go ahead and gather the information and uh, then we need to go ahead and know whom we are attacking what are the different layers for that that means uh, what uh, are the countermeasures that they can go ahead and uh, take against us so these are the few things that I would be teaching you today so the let me check okay I think that it's uh, checking the layers of OSI so I'll just type steps of ethical hacking perfect okay so these are the things which we'll go through once we go in detail related to uh, ethical hacking the first step that we would be look looking today would be the footprinting who is NS lookup search engines and social networking sites after that scanning and enumeration that are computer ports which ports are open which ports are not and what would be the application services then trojans and backdoors viruses and then finally the hacking and exploitation that would be the buffer overflow spoofing or different types of attacks which includes even DDoS which is not over here as of now but uh, yeah, these are things we would be te I would be teaching you. So let's take a first look at footprinting. So I'll just go ahead and show you. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what are the footprinting tools we have. And after that, we I will explain it to you what is footprinting. So let's check. Okay, we should be okay here. As you can see, we have uh, uh, these information gathering tools are all no, also known as footprinting tools. And as you can see that we have loads of things over here. Service fingerprinting, routing analysis, uh, OS fingerprinting as to gathering information about a related OS and loads of other stuff. So let's first know what exactly footprinting terminology is uh, and what all things are included in that. So footprinting is just that we need to go ahead and gather information about specific people. Okay, let me check the updates. By the time it gets updated, let's go ahead and start with the footprinting terminology. Okay, so footprinting and reconnaissance is what I would we would be teaching learning today. So what is footprinting? These are the several ways of gathering information about footprinting. So before we go deep into this concept, it is important to know the basic terminology used in footprinting. And these terms will help you understand the concept of footprinting and its structures. So open source or passive information gathering, that is the first one. So open source of pass or passive information gathering, PIG, that's what I call. It is the easiest way to collect information about the target organization. It refers to the process of gathering information from open sources or publicly available sources such as newspapers, television, social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, Orkut, or blogs, etc. And using these, you can gather information such as network boundaries as to where they are actually located, their geolocation, IP addresses reachable via internet, operating systems, web servers, which are used by the target network, TCP and UDP services in each system, which are open and which are not, control mechanisms, system architectures, intrusion detect detection uh, systems, and many more. So that is what is included in uh, open source and passive information. After that, we have active information gathering. So in active information gathering, process attackers mainly focus on the employees of the target organization. Attackers try to extract information from the employees by conducting social engineering on the site visits or interviews or questionnaires, something similar to that. After that, we have anonymous footprinting. This refers to the process of collecting information from sources anonymously so that your efforts cannot be traced. Uh, at this point of time, people normally use uh, Tor browsers, which are mostly famous in anonymous web browsing. 
so yeah and after that we have pseudo anonymous footprinting and these refers to the process of collecting information from the sources that have been published on internet but it is not directly linked to the author's name this information may be published under a different name or the author may have a well established uh, pen name you can say means a random pseudo name or the author may also be a corporate or government official and he may be prohibited from uh, posting under his or her original name so irrespective of the reason for finding the author's name or uh, collecting information from such sources sources are called as pseudo anonymous so after that we have lots of other uh, types of uh, information gathering which are organizational or private footprinting or internet footprinting uh, so in footprinting we normally collect the basic information about the target network determine the operating systems used platforms running web servers then we perform the whois or dns network and organizational queries and finally we find the vulnerabilities and exploits for launching these attacks so you might be wondering that how facebook is very useful in that so i could have also and you might also be wondering that why only facebook why not uh, let's say uh, we have twitter as well over here then why not twitter or why not all good the reason being that facebook is the most popular and people don't hesitate uh, to give out information on facebook let's say for example and even if they don't want to give out information they may just simply give out without even them knowing that let's say for example you want to search a person on facebook and you have find out his uh, name and uh, if you want to go ahead and access his let's say for example facebook profile you want to hack into that and when you uh, go ahead and let's say you click forward the password uh, option and then it will ask you what is the date of birth of the person and just for an example because that is a normal question that people keep so you, you want to know the date of birth of that person so what you would do you would go ahead and search into his profile and you may not able to get that so or you may call and you may do uh, social engineering to get his date of birth or something like that but there is another way even if you do social engineering stuff like by calling them there's still a way that they can trace you out uh, by looking up at the phone number until unless you have not created a fake account and you have created a fake uh, cell phone number as well but that is uh, getting into deep stuff and it may also uh, have different expenditures as to getting a phone getting a cell phone getting a uh, sim card and then creating fake uh, ids to get this fake sim card so instead of doing that why not go ahead and use some just uh, social engineering techniques such as uh, just guessing and gathering information so the first part would be just go ahead and uh, look up his uh, if you just want uh, the let's say year of birth just go ahead and look uh, at his colleagues with whom he has taken pics let's say for example if uh, let's say for xyz the guy's name is let's say mr smith and uh, he has a f another friend whose name is mr adam and they went to the same school and they had they were in the same class and everything so it's probably that um, he might be let's say for example mr adam's age is uh, 1989 so the uh, mr smith's age would probably be 1988 or 89 or 90 he won't be much bigger or lesser than that so you can just go ahead and try the op these out options out and you can get at the date of birth so now you know how you can go ahead and gather such information just by looking at someone's facebook profile you don't even want to know who his friends are just by looking at his photos that he have uploaded you can get a lot loads of information so in security research facebook is called as a treasure trove of personally identifiable information uh, a report by imperva uh, revealed that users general information can often include date of birth home addresses and sometimes even the mother's maiden name allowing hackers to access this and other websites and applications created created by targeting uh, spear phishing campaigns uh, in detail a concept called friend mapping is also there when an attacker can get further knowledge of a user's friend circle having access their account and posing as a trusted friend they may even cause some uh, dam mayhem or damage and these also this can include transfer of funds and even extortion so when asked why people why facebook is so important to hackers uh, then the imperva security senior strategist noah ba uh, noah barsioff said that people also add work friends on facebook so a team leader let's say for example can be identified and this can lead to a corporate data being accessed so you can uh, go ahead and gather information create fake accounts and gather information from there so in more extreme cases even if facebook's administrator rights can be accessed although it is said that it requires more effort on the hacker side and it is not prevalent but it is a holy grail of uh, attackers as it provides a, a hacker with data of all the users and not just one user so on protection it is set out to rule that um, you need to go ahead and only access the website when you are using the ssl security across the whole website but that's also not that effective because people can also do man in the middle attacks and they can also strip the ssl layer off so nowadays everything is possible so these are the ways as to how we can go ahead and get into footprinting 
Now, the next question that you would be asking is why foot printing? So I'll get into it deeper into that, but that would be it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be getting into, into much more information about uh, the ethical hacking and why it is considered as illegal hacking. And I'll help you more uh, understand about the footprinting tools, their threats and their countermeasures.